Bailey. You can sit down. Thank you for your help. All right, Hunter, you are now the museum guardian. Remember that Hunter is the museum guardian, so you don't want to see you. You when you think he's not looking. Stay in character. Did you really? <laughs> Immediately get into a pose if you lose your guardianship. Sarah. No. <laughs> <laughs> focus, focus, focus. What? I thought so. What? It's <laughs> blue. Okay. <laughs> what else? Choose a pose that you can stay. Be watching. As itch, 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 as itch,
same thing, only going that way. The show was written by an um, alumni from Rutland High School. His name's Andrew Tarr, and he's actually really cool. Um, but uh, the show is about Peter Leroux, um, who is an older scientist um, who has made this like new drug that hasn't really been tested on humans. Um, and this drug makes people young and so he's forced into retirement uh, and he takes the drug because all of his research is offline. Um, it's 2039 by the way um, and so he takes this this drug with him um, as he retires and so now there's like a whole s search for Peter Leroux and um, because they're calling him a bioterrorist and uh, because this drug could be very harmful. <laughs> and so it just follows Peter Leroux through the journey of that. I think it's awesome that an old alumni is writing a script because I think it's just bringing together the community more. And I know that he's probably going to bring a lot of other alumni support. And it's just like driving everyone together. And hopefully it's going to perpetuate more of this in the future. So yeah. I think it's pretty cool because he knows our strengths um, and he can kind of made the script for us and we he can work with us and explain how he want how what he intended and we can have our own like liberties with the script it's really interesting that we're doing a play from an from an alumni because not many not many schools have the opportunity to do that and it's really good that RHS has has that it's called Marco Polo I believe um, uh, where our playwright will send us a quick video about something and then we will watch it and then afterwards we will send a short video as well. So again, kind of like he's the Marco, we're the Polo, sending and receiving videos. So we can kind of contact that way. Um, a lot of it is just clarifying questions with the play, so such as ages, um, what, um, what he had in mind for certain scenes, um, as well as music, because he has provided us with music for some of the scenes as well. Security for Yoigatsu International. Thanks again for speaking with us, Mala. My pleasure, Krista. Oh, we were talking about Peter Leroux. Now, for the people just tuning in, you worked with Leroux recently, yes? Um, well, in a matter of speaking, I, before I got the call from Harish Pakanada that I was taking over director from Ming Slovak for head of security. I was the transitions director for Clarabem's Cambridge Research Complex. My duties with employees were limited to those who were starting and ending their employment. So when Mr. Leroux was fired, you dealt with him at that point? Well, Mr. Leroux wasn't fired from Clarabem, technically. His departure was strictly based on his age. He was at the age of retirement and left, so we thought anyway, on amicable terms. But to be clear, his retirement was not considered optional. Well, no. Zerban has been on the cutting edge of pharmaceutical research for nearly four decades now. Mostly because we have the sharpest minds in all of the world working on the development of new drugs and therapies. Now, Mr. L now, as brilliant as Mr. Laurel was, and make no mistake, he's a very smart man, the fact is that a 72-year-old brain cannot fire synapses as fast as a younger person, so his CU was required. CU, conscious uncoupling. That's right. So a forced retirement. And <coughs> the... Well, we don't call it that, but yes, we did end his employment. And this drug that he stole from the lab, what can you tell us about it? Well, we know that he was working with engineered microviruses, 
designed to re-encode a person's DNA. This the virus is designed to install install the new code uh, on delivery, much the same way that an installer would upload uh, new software onto your file chip, computer, or phone. And what do we know about the software that this stolen microvirus is programmed to install? Well, we know that it is derived from lobster DNA. Ms. Littoreau was doing self-directed research with lobster. Self-directed? Yes, that's one of the changes I've recommended to all you wake up to companies. As a tenured researcher, Mr. Littoreau was allowed to work offline. And he was not a security threat at this time. Um, so, and he was one of the science field's most respected scientists. Um, but virtual, unfortunately, virtual research can can be tracked, but his offline research could not. So. Theraven has no idea what kind of drug Mr. LaRoe might have been developing at their lab. Well, uh, we, that is, that is unfortunately the disadvantage of doing, allowing scientists to work hard for working offline, like we call it. All we can do is guess and hope. Guess and hope about what kind of health agent that Peter Moreau has developed and what his motives might be. We're still learning more about this rogue scientist, but we do know that, as is often the case with these sorts of individuals, he has no children and has never been married. Um, that is the case, yes. Now, in terms of his whereabouts, I... Well, we are working closely with the Kardashian administration on this. Our nation's top priority is to find Mr. LaRoe and contain whatever microbiome compound that he might have in his possession. And Mr. Takanada has offered a personal reward of, I believe the amount is now $15 million U.S. to anyone who can help provide information to successfully capture and contain this individual and his Peter LaRoe. Some have started calling him Lobster Man, a supervillain name of sorts. But whether you call him Lobster Man, Doomsday Dude, or simply Peter LaRoe, I would just like to say that Takanata has a right. He deserves to have his research back in his hands. We need to get Peter LaRoe out of the streets and just you. <laughs> this is actually a recording. That was so tiring. <laughs> it's fine. Hey, Mickey, how are you doing in there, little buddy? Still look pretty good. All right, stay in there. Oh, I expect it to taste much worse. It's actually not that bad. Not bad at ah. Oh! <laughs> Look at me. You're still here. All right, stay with me. Hey, Kit. You okay? What? Yeah, I'm. I'm fine. Are you sure you're bleeding? What? what? Well, no, no. This is um just a stage makeup. You, you see, I'm in I'm in a play at the at the high school. I'm I'm in the drama club there. It's called a uh, uh, encore. Yeah, this is just yeah encore. Well, okay, but better go clean yourself up. You're gonna scare somebody. Yeah, sorry, I'll do that. Uh, hey, um, man. Uh huh. Is there some place that, like a uh, public restroom around here that a high school kid like me could use? Well, there's a group. There's a old age home around the corner. Maybe they'll let you use that, or there's a Google Starbucks up the street. Hey, uh, thanks. Hey, whose kid are you? Do I know you? Uh, no, I'm an exchange student from uh, Norway. Norway, huh? Yeah, uh, thanks. What's your name? It's 
Sven. Well, Steven, but, but it's Sven, but Steven's my nickname. Yeah. Well, I'm Dora. Nice to meet you, Sven. Ah! Shock me. Sad electricity. Are you sure that's makeup? It looks pretty real. Again. You okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Just gotta wash off the old stage makeup, you know? <laughs> well, okay. Alright, uh, thanks. Um, I play Callista in the show, and Callista is a news reporter. And so in the scene, she's interviewing this, um, this, this girl named Mala, who is, as um, Callista had said, the newly appointed director or something um, of the Japanese company that controls um, TheraVen Pharmaceuticals. And um, we're just getting more information on Peter Leroux and how the world sees it and how everyone looks at Peter Leroux. Like, that's not in his inner circle. I was inter being interviewed by the big time news reporter since initially at the start of the play I'm the as I stated I was the transitions director for the research complex where um, Peter who was just interviewed previously worked um, and I had to tell him the news that uh, he was leaving and then later on I got promoted to direct security director of the entire company um, owned by Hiroshi Takanata. In the scene that I was just in, uh, Peter just took the um, just took the potion that makes him young again, and he doesn't really realize that he's young yet. And so I like he's kind of just improving through it all with me because he has no idea what he looks like or anything. That one I was just talking with Abby, who plays Dora. She's a worker at the retirement home and I drank this this vile potion that not many people really know about too much and it turns me younger that's why I turned into a, a kid and yeah are you in the Vermont loop you want to sit with me and my husband uh, attention Vermont passengers the killings in Valley Night Loop has been delayed for approximately 25 minutes these are names Great. Oh, here, come here. I want to show you. Oh, Peter, Peter, it's Corey. Corey Walker. Oh, excuse me. It's an old friend. Peter, damn, how long has it been, man? Wow, uh, Corey, last time I saw you was your, um, at your show in uh, Brooklyn, uh, the House of Blues. That was like, what, 30 years ago? Yeah. I don't know if you remember. You were opening for uh, Smash Mouth. Man, I'm, I'm sorry about that night. I kind of blew you off. It, it's fine. So you're heading back to Rutland? Killington Valley, yeah. yeah. Whatever, I still call Rutland. I'm surprised. I never thought you'd set foot in that town again. Yeah, well, my dad just passed. Uh, I gotta go handle his affairs. Oh, I'm sorry, Corey. I, I, I didn't know. Okay, uh, he had a long life, 104. When we were kids, almost no one lived that long. Yeah, I mean, it still sucks to lose a parent. My dad died back in uh, 23, and I still miss the guy. Yeah, he was, uh... Cool dude. Uh, so is your mom. Is she, is she still um, with us? Yeah, she's getting older though. Ninety-one. That's actually why I'm heading back. I'm putting her in a in an old age home. Maple Leaf. Yeah, she's not too happy about it. I mean, like, who would be? But being honest with you, it's not that bad of a place. They've done a lot of renovations. It doesn't even really look like an old age home anymore. Maybe I should have you talk to her about it. I haven't too much of a salesman. She's probably, she probably knows that I'm worried I'm going to end up there one day myself. Truth is, they have residents as young as 65. You and I are old enough to be there now. Wow, can you believe that we're in our 70s? I'm 71, 72 in Japan. Well, they got you a year older there. Remind me not to go to Japan then. So you're still 70, right? February 13th is your birthday. Impressive, Obi-Wan. Your memory's still intact. Well, they say 70's the new 60, right? Yeah, they, they say that. No one's on books, okay? So far, just figure it out.
did um was with Peter my best friend from high school but it's like 50 years later so I was a one-hit wonder Corey Walker he had a hit back in like the 90s ish so the there's a woman that recognized me and was trying to get me to like sit with her husband on her and her on the train but then I see my best friend from high school that I recognize I run over to him and it's kind of just us like saying hi to each other again so it's setting up the rest of what's going to happen. Um, I would say absolutely do it. It is so fun. You, um, we do a wide variety of plays. Um, and there's also a lot of good backstage opportunities as well. So if you're, not, if you're too shy to act and go on stage, there's still plenty of things for you to do. You should join. It is fun. Everybody respects each other. There is no discrimination or anything like that. I would say that they should definitely go for it. Um, I think that doing theater has made me a more social and charismatic person, and it's perfect for learning like speaking skills, and I think that's one of the most important skills you can have. Please join. It's so fun. We're all like a family here, and we practically live with each other at this point. Um, but it's really fun and it's just such a great community to be in and we're all so supportive of each other and theater is just amazing so do it man. <laughs> Encore is really fun, unpredictable shows, a bunch of different places to work in. Yeah, come and join. <laughs> 